With Bloodlines 2 coming out in the somewhat near-ish future, a lot of people have been asking me, should I try the first game, and if so, what clan should I try first? And the answer to the first question is yes. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 1 is a classic. It can be a little, you know, rough around the edges, and that's putting it mildly, but honestly, with a few tweaks, the unofficial patch, it's well worth playing. It's one of my favourite RPGs of all time, so big yes on the first question. And the second question, which clan should you play? Well, that's what I want to talk about in this video. Now, the simple answer to this question, and probably the correct one mostly, is play whichever clan appeals to you the most. But most people will also tell you, you probably want to avoid Nosferatu or Malkavian as your first playthrough. Now, some people will say you should do it if you really, really want to. And I might actually say, if you've got your heart set on one of those two clans, do it. But be aware, they will change the playthrough a little. Nosferatu changes the way you play a little. It will restrict some of the dialogue. And overall, I would probably recommend for most people, this should be a later playthrough. It's, it's a good way to make the game, um, you know, repeatable, replayable, because there are enough differences that you will enjoy yet another playthrough. The same is true of Malkavian. And in fact, Malkavian as a first playthrough could be a little difficult because actually the dialogue is very, very confusing because you're insane, sort of. Uh, <laughs> and honestly, some of the conversations you have, you will not be completely sure what the hell you're saying. And for a game like this, you, you might want to experience the dialogue as a sane person for the first time. Again, if you've got your heart set on it, by all means. But if you're asking me which clan I would recommend for you, it's probably not going to be one of either of those two. So, which clan would I recommend? Well, I've played all of the clans except Gangrel, so I can't honestly recommend that one because I don't know it well. Of the other four clans, Bruja, Toreador, Tremere and Ventru, what I would say is play the one that appeals to you the most. So what I'm going to do is tell you the order in which I would probably choose to play for myself, uh, looking at those four clans, and try to give you my reasons for doing so, and you can decide which of those clans suits your ideal playthrough. I'm going to start with Bruja. With Bruja, think warrior, think badass, think, you know, almost superhuman type character. This is not to say they are not intelligent. This doesn't mean they can't be charming. They can be both, and often are, but they're also, you know, they're also pretty good in a fight. They like fighting. They're very, very good at it. And whilst fighting is not the be-all and end-all in this game, it does get more important towards the end. And let's face it, half the appeal to playing a vampire is feeling like a badass. And Bruja will definitely give you that, especially if you put a lot of points into celerity. This is a discipline that lets you move at superhuman speed, and it's probably the most powerful discipline. You can argue back and forth as to which is the most powerful, but celerity will make a lot of the fights you go into very, very easy because you know, you're just moving superhumanly fast. At the start, you'll be moving faster than everyone else. You'll hit them more than they hit you with melee. You'll find it a lot easier to shoot with uh, ranged weapons, which in this game, you know, are not particularly great. It's a little clumsy. It's not, you know, it's a very old game. So slowing time down definitely helps. And as you rank this up, you will start moving fast enough to dodge bullets, basically. Literally dodge bullets. You will see bullets come towards you and you can step out of the way. This is brilliant for both melee and firearms builds. Now, most people will probably tell you only specialize at one sort of combat, firearms or melee. I would actually say it's a good idea to have some basic competence in both, especially towards the end of the game where there are some opponents that are just difficult to get melee range with. 
it is useful to have firearms. But even if you decide to go for a full firearms run, it's probably worth having, you know, a point of strength and a couple of points of melee just for some of the early battles that are reasonably easy, but you'll just wade through so much ammo if you try to shoot everything. And hitting them with an axe works, especially if you take one or two ranks of potence. But with Bruja, you have that choice. You can basically build as you like in those two powers. Bruja also get the presence discipline, which will make your opponents weaker, slow them down, and at the higher ranks, more or less paralyze them with fear, allowing you to murder them quite easily. And if you're using the unofficial plus patch, presence will actually allow you to have some dialogue options. You can use the discipline of presence to force your will upon people, very similar to the dominate uh, discipline. All round, Bruja is just a great first playthrough clan. If you want to feel like a badass, uh, even if you want to play the charismatic type of character, you can still play Bruja. As, as I'm fond of saying, there isn't a Bruja in the game that won't talk your ears off quite eloquently, actually. I mean, granted, some of them will use uh, choice language, some of them will be more aggressive than others, but generally speaking, they enjoy a good verbal battle as much as a physical one. Next up, I would probably suggest Toriador. And in fact, if you are the sort of person who wants to play the cool, charming, sexy vampire more than anything else, this is probably the best choice for a first playthrough for you. Oddly enough, they share two disciplines with the Bruja. Celerity, so they've got the superhuman speed, and Presence, so they get the, the dialogue options if you're using the plus patch, and the ability to strike fear into their opponents. They don't get Potence, which means they're not quite as good at melee, although you can still, you know, make a good melee Toreador. They also have Auspex. Auspex is basically wall hack. In, the, in Bloodlines 1. It will allow you to see your enemies through walls. It will also increase your perception and wits. It will make you better at shooting. So Toriador is probably the best clan if you want to do a firearm run. If all you want to do is run around with a deagle and shoot everything, this is probably a good class for it because you will see your enemies coming from a mile away and be moving so fast you can shoot them in the head before they have time to do anything. But the Toreador, from a role-playing perspective, is supposed to be a lot more about the charm, the seduction. Now, people are going to tell you that when it comes down to it, in this game, persuasion is king. Seduction really doesn't offer any major advantages over persuasion and has many weaknesses. There are some benefits to seduction, though. You will be able to have your way with the ladies, or the men, and um, it will allow you to have some more interesting conversations. So honestly, if you're playing Toreador for your first playthrough, and you read someone saying, Oh no, just, just do Persuasion, don't do Seduction, don't do Intimidate, I would ignore that. And feel free to take both Persuasion and Seduction in your, your first playthrough. Yes, it will mean you won't spend as many points maybe in some combat discipline, but honestly, as long as you get celerity quite high up, you're going to have a reasonably easy time with combat anyway. Go nuts. You know, be, be the talker, be the seducer. Use that Toreador sexy to, to have a, you know, sexy old time. Next up, Ventru. Now, a lot of people think of Ventru as being the sort of the talkers, the persuaders, but in actual fact, they're not, at least not in this game. They're the dominators. That sounds a little rude, but what I mean is they get the dominate discipline, which lets them bend people to their will. It's less about being charming and more about being commanding. You are the sort of natural born leader. And in fact, believe it or not, the Ventru is probably the toughest vampire clan to play. And I don't mean toughest as, as in the most difficult. I mean they are really, really hard to kill, especially if you max out fortitude and presence. You will basically go into battle and you will shrug off everything. They are so tough. 
Fortitude is, is massively powerful. If you rank that up and you wear decent armor, you probably don't need to improve your dodge and wits, but if you do, you will feel like a tank. You will just you walk through and ignore everything, not just the, the small bullets, but it will take a seriously tough boss to make you worry. Now, if you're using the unofficial plus patch, you will get the dialogue options for both dominate and presence. So there is a little overlap and you might be thinking, all right, I'll just put it into presence. But dominate has some useful abilities. For example, putting people to sleep or making them forget you're there. That can be very helpful in certain stealthy type missions. So check out the disciplines and actually decide which suits you more from a role playing perspective. But just understand that you have the, the possibility with this clan to become the toughest vampire possible. And finally, Tremere. The wizards, basically. These, these are your mages. And the reason I put them as last out of the four clans I might suggest for your first playthrough is not because they're not interesting or powerful, because they are. It's that it, the combat side of things can be a little, you know, awkward at times. They are very, very powerful. Uh, Thaumaturgy, I hope I'm saying that correct, is amazing. You can eradicate entire rooms of enemies very easily. You can actually drain people of blood. You could put up a blood shield. It's, I mean, it's, it's really powerful, but sometimes it can be a little difficult to manage, especially if you're fighting things that you cannot drain for blood, because you will use a lot of blood if you want to use thaumaturgy all the time. So you're also going to need to make sure you keep, say, firearms or melee reasonably well ranked up. You're going to end up using firearms as well. So you can't rely on thaumaturgy the entire time. So it's it's a little less predictable in combat is what I'm saying. Having said that, if you are the sort of person who just prefers mages in RPGs, this is it. This is your first playthrough because, well, they get blood magic, basically. This is your mage. This is your mage. And if that's the sort of class you prefer, you're going to like Tremere, okay? Um, they also get Dominate, so they are master manipulators. So this is another one if you want to dominate people and blast them with uh, blood magic. You know, you, you can do that. They also get all specs, which does lend itself pretty well to firearms. So that can make up for some difficulties you might have if you run out of blood. Because this is one of this is one of those ones where if you start getting low on blood, you've got, you know, it's your arsenal is a little more limited. Whereas something like the Toreador or the Bruja, they can just use one point of blood to get celerity up and they're just they're doing fine generally, you'll probably want to be using more blood. One thing you should know about the Tremere, they get the best haven. If you play your cards right, they get the, they get the nicest haven. I don't want to spoil it too much for you, but um, that's, that's possibly another good reason to play this class. But if you choose to not play this as, uh, as a first playthrough, and I would totally understand if you, if you do choose that, you should do another playthrough play, playing as Tremere because it is a ton of fun. It really is. Thaumaturgy, it's just fun. It really, I mean, I can't say it, I can't say it any less creepily than that. Blood magic is cool. Now, in the end, I do realize I've not been able to give you a definitive answer that you, the listener, must play Clan X. But I do hope I've given you enough information to understand which of these clans is probably the best one for you. And that is what I would do if I were you. I would choose the one you think you're going to have the most fun playing. And just know that in, in actual fact, you could finish the game the, for a first playthrough with any of these clans. You're not going to find it too difficult and you should have fun. This is a great game. It's a classic 
little rough around the edges, very rough around the edges, but you know, there is the unofficial patch. I highly recommend you use the unofficial patch. There are some other tweaks that I would probably recommend. I may do another video where I cover some tweaks that you should, uh, you should do, and maybe even some basic advice for character building that is kind of universal for all of the clans. However, the answer to the question, which clan should you play first, is which clan do you want to play first?